Уважаемые друзья, добрый день. Позвольте мне... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome uh, to our session. Happy New Year. Happy Old New Year. Happy New New Year. Uh, we are uh, launching an interesting panel and uh, I would like to pass the floor uh, to our host, uh, to uh, Maria Alexandrovna Yegorova, um, head of a, a division of uh, corporate and entrepreneurial uh, law uh, in the law department of RENEPA. Thank you very much. Uh, the Dean uh, of the Law uh, Department uh, could not make it uh, to this session uh, for some reasons he uh, needed to be elsewhere. As a, a Deputy Dean, I welcome you in the Presidential Academy. This is the uh, fifth Gaidar Forum, very successful event. And this is the first time that we have a session on law. Uh, to be more specific, a session on anti-monopoly legislation. We uh, decided to discuss this uh, subject uh, of uh, monopolies uh, because of serious uh, challenges and threats uh, to the national security uh, that emerge uh, in a difficult political situation uh, in the world. Uh, we are going to look at the antitrust legislation, liberalization of this legislation, uh, enhancements uh, of some uh, clauses uh, in the uh, laws in the uh, Spiransky Law Department. Uh, they have uh, created a division of uh, competition law headed uh, by Mr. Kinyov. Uh, we very much appreciate uh, your joining us today. We are going to take presentations uh, from uh, the prominent uh, scholars who study uh, competition law and uh, entrepreneurial law. We are going to uh, hear from uh, a number of corporate lawyers. We want uh, to get their uh, inputs on the matter that we are discussing. So the session is uh, open. I wish you to have a good, fruitful discussion. Let me make a few introductory remarks, um, I'd say housekeeping remarks. We have eight presenters and we have two hours. Uh, we have discussed the situation and decided that we would give uh, each presenter the maximum of uh, eight or minutes uh, or 10 minutes tops uh, to uh, make it uh, a discussion, to keep it lively. Uh, we are going to uh, give uh, an opportunity uh, to uh, ask questions from the floor. And in the end, if we still have time, we will uh, open it for Q&A. For the presenters, uh, I want to say that you can either stay where you are when you make a presentation or you can uh, use that lectern. Uh, please uh, be aware that I am going to uh, watch timing very, very closely. Uh, no uh, offenses. The first presenter is Alexander Kinov. He has already been introduced. Uh, he will uh, speak about cartels as a threat to national security of Russian Federation in uh, the sphere of economics. Uh, I would rather uh, be here at the lectern because I am going to use a PowerPoint uh, presentation. Uh, everything that has to do with uh, 
national security is very important uh, and um, relevant uh, today. We very much appreciate uh, the name of the uh, session. I am going to uh, look at a more narrow subject of cartels presenting a threat to national security. Uh, this uh, should be uh, very acute, very relevant uh, today. Let me uh, start by uh, showing you a quote uh, from uh, President uh, Putin. Uh, he uh, has been uh, quite uh, tough uh, on the uh, monopolies and he has uh, formulated the uh, objectives uh, for anti-trust agency. We need uh, to provide uh, better goods and provide services uh, that have uh, quality higher than that of the competition. That is uh, what we want uh, to have. Russia, uh, unfortunately, uh, suffers uh, from uh, crime in this uh, domain, uh, in natural resources production, uh, in uh, medicine production, in uh, procurement. Uh, all these things are subject uh, to uh, antitrust legislation. Um, every year we identify uh, around 200 classic uh, cartels and uh, we uh, usually uh, find uh, several uh, contracts uh, signed uh, every year which uh, are in violation uh, of antitrust uh, laws. Um, an average uh, fine uh, in the last several years have amounted uh, to a very uh, high uh, levels. Uh, what uh, we uh, see today uh, is uh, uh, very uh, typical. Uh, the uh, tenders uh, have become a standard procedure uh, in most organizations and uh, there are a lot of uh, fraudulent uh, activities uh, that uh, take place uh, during uh, such uh, trades. Collusion uh, is uh, becoming uh, a very uh, frequent uh, type of uh, crime. Uh, the amount of state procurement in 2014 has uh, amounted uh, to 23.8 trillion rubles. Uh, Government-controlled uh, uh, companies uh, have uh, made uh, procurements in the amount of 17.5 trillion rubles. Very serious money. Uh, according to uh, OSD uh, experts, uh, the uh, damage uh, caused by uh, cartels uh, can amount uh, to 2.2% uh, 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 of the GDP, which translates into 1.5 trillion rubles. So, uh, this is indeed a threat to national security. Uh, uh, cartels uh, is uh, an area uh, where uh, we count on uh, serious uh, support uh, from law enforcement organizations. Um, unfortunately, uh, the uh, police is not uh, very uh, willing uh, to uh, do investigations uh, on Article 178 uh, of the Russian Federation uh, Penal Code. They don't like those uh, cases. Uh, we uh, see uh, very uh, few uh, criminal uh, cases, up to uh, 10 uh, within a year, and uh, not all of them end up in court. Uh, cartels are very well organized, and uh, in Russia, uh, they are uh, often 
uh, covered and protected uh, by uh, corrupt uh, government officials. Uh, Mr. Shuvalov uh, supervises uh, our work. Let me give you a few examples uh, which uh, will give you an idea of uh, how serious uh, the cases that uh, we identify are. Um, fish cartel, uh, this is uh, quite a well-known uh, case. Anti-monopoly uh, service has uh, done investigation uh, together uh, with FSB. Uh, the uh, cartel uh, worked in the uh, fishing industry, and uh, they had several billions of rubles uh, in revenues. And uh, the cartel was controlled uh, by uh, foreign uh, companies. Uh, so uh, we uh, used uh, the law on uh, protection of investment and uh, several other uh, laws. Another uh, well-known case, uh, Morocco uh, fish cartel. Uh, this is again production of uh, fish in Morocco uh, national uh, waters. Uh, this uh, became uh, possible uh, through uh, illegal uh, work by Ross Rybolovstva. So we had to investigate uh, their uh, operations and then we had to uh, look at other companies uh, that did business in that market. Another uh, case that have been uh, brought uh, to an end just before the new year, uh, international uh, sea container uh, shipping. Uh, this uh, company uh, shipped containers to uh, several uh, different uh, ports and uh, they have uh, been using uh, in competitive uh, prices using markups uh, which impacted uh, the uh, prices uh, of goods uh, we have learned uh, that uh, Russia uh, offers very little uh, protection uh, to uh, our operators we uh, are completely dependent uh, on foreign companies. Transloading uh, takes place in big European ports, uh, Rotterdam, Hamburg, and uh, in those ports they control uh, all the cargo uh, bound for Russia from all different parts of the world. So they uh, have information about all suppliers, about volumes of uh, shipping, and that also presents uh, some threats. Here uh, are more examples uh, that uh, show you the uh, scale of damage. Uh, this is uh, a case uh, that uh, deals with a uh, road building uh, project. Uh, there was uh, a, uh, a case of collusion uh, in that uh, project and you can see the amount of damage uh, over 700 million uh, rubles uh, over just two years uh, this is another uh, case uh, in the city of uh, stavropol a uh, collusion took place uh, in uh, a contract uh, for construction and maintenance uh, of motor roads uh, another case that has been completed uh, by our uh, department uh, in uh, Udmurtia. Uh, this uh, has to do uh, with uh, supplies of medicines. Again, they set up a cartel which included uh, several corporations. Uh, I must also add uh, that the uh, organizers of those contracts um, have been completely inactive. Uh, they uh, absolutely had to notice uh, what was going on. Uh, the people who uh, organized uh, auctions, uh, people who placed uh, public uh, contracts uh, in the healthcare systems, uh, must have known that uh, this was going on. 
uh, this is a very uh, serious uh, threat to the national security. Uh, we, uh, in the anti-monopoly uh, agency, uh, reveal uh, a lot of uh, crime that uh, presents a very high uh, threat uh, to the nation. Uh, this is another case uh, on uh, construction regulations. Uh, this uh, investigation has been going on uh, for about eight years. Uh, we uh, look at uh, the uh, work of the Ministry of Construction and uh, several uh, companies. Uh, there were uh, several uh, parent companies and affiliated companies. Uh, they uh, have uh, monopolized uh, the uh, procedures uh, of construction, and that gave them a way uh, to uh, manipulate uh, construction prices. Uh, this uh, caused uh, serious damage uh, to the state. We are talking uh, about uh, dozens or maybe even hundreds of millions of rubles. Alexander, uh, you uh, have very little time left. I could give you more examples uh, of the uh, crimes committed uh, by the government officials. Uh, the uh, Ward uh, scheme has become uh, known uh, to a uh, broad public. Uh, there are so many uh, public uh, servants uh, which are trying to uh, give illegal uh, support uh, and uh, illegal benefits uh, to uh, certain companies uh, which uh, pay them for this service. Uh, in this uh, case, again, uh, it was about uh, road construction. At the uh, end of uh, 2015, uh, President of Russian Federation has issued a decree on the strategy of national security of Russian Federation. This document uh, focuses uh, on the matters that I have described, uh, national uh, security, food security, provision of uh, medicines, uh, countering corruption. These are the things that uh, the uh, degree uh, focuses on, very relevant uh, today. A federal anti-monopoly uh, agency has come up with uh, a number of initiatives. We want to add uh, several things uh, to the uh, national security strategy, and we have forwarded our uh, proposals uh, for review. Uh, we uh, want uh, to develop a long-term uh, program uh, to uh, identify and uh, prevent uh, roots and uh, conditions uh, that uh, help uh, violate uh, antitrust legislation. That's all I have. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have time for one or two questions from the floor immediately after the presentation. Please don't make long comments. Uh, please don't uh, make uh, another presentation from the floor. Uh, just short questions. Uh, we have none, uh, so we continue. Uh, we continue our session. Alexander uh, has uh, shown several uh, trends uh, that have to do with the national security. And uh, next, we are going to pass the floor uh, to Vladimir Belich. Uh, he uh, is uh, a uh, head of. Uh, a, a division of uh, business law in Ural's uh, State uh, University for Law Studies. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, over uh, to this uh, forum, and uh, I very much appreciate an opportunity to uh, make a presentation at this session. I 
uh, have uh, published a number of articles um, on the matter of national economic security. Another subject that uh, I was always interested in is energy security, and I have uh, published articles on that matter as well. And I have had some publications on military security. My main conclusion uh, is that the main uh, threat for national security does not uh, come from the outside. It does not come from NATO, from the United States of America, uh, or um, something like that. Uh, the uh, domestic threats uh, are a different category. The number one uh, biggest threat to national security is corruption. It's corruption. According to experts' estimates, Russia uh, is uh, rated as 145. Uh, it doesn't get much worse than that. Uh, it uh, happens because of a number of factors, but it all boils down to one simple thing. They cannot steal this much. Uh, in uh, one article, I uh, uh, made a joke uh, saying that uh, we should introduce uh, quotas uh, for stealing. Uh, when they steal more than what's allowed, they should be put behind the bars. Uh, there's an opinion that uh, monopolies in our country uh, work on a very high level. Many experts, Russian and international, uh, are supportive of this uh, statement. Uh, one expert, someone, John Ross, said that Russian economy uh, is uh, more monopolized than any Western economy. And then he goes on to say that the uh, government of Russia hope uh, to uh, have uh, any changes are nothing but an illusion. Uh, this expert says that uh, we have failed in uh, total privatization. Uh, and uh, nothing will really help. And I uh, had two questions about that. Why and how uh, can Russian experts and uh, international experts uh, appreciate the level of uh, monopolism uh, in this country? I have checked out uh, all kinds of literature, and I have not uh, found uh, any parameters, any uh, criterion that they would use. So I think it's uh, a very uh, practical problem. We need to develop an assessment uh, mechanism. We need to develop uh, indicators, parameters uh, that uh, we can use to judge uh, about uh, corruption. I have found interesting materials uh, about corruption in Uzbekistan. Uh, they uh, claim that uh, the uh, level of uh, monopolism uh, is uh, coming down very quickly. Uh, next. Uh, why in Russian Federation uh, the uh, level of monopolism is high and it's uh, detrimental to the economy? Uh, why in the United States, in European countries and uh, in China uh, everything looks great? Uh, George Ross, uh, that reporter that I referred to earlier, uh, wrote, uh, According to market laws, uh, China uh, is prospering and Russia is falling apart. Why communist Russia, uh, communist uh, China, uh, is uh, developing successfully, and uh, Russia, which has uh, communism in the past, uh, is. Uh, falling apart, according to that one reporter. Uh, we are looking at two economies, uh, Russian and Chinese. In uh, some publications, I have read an opinion that uh, Russian economy, Russian uh, policies should not copy the Chinese uh, development model. The Chinese model is uh, designed and built not uh, on uh, liberal and democratic uh, values. It's uh, something else. 
it's uh, uh, somewhat uh, of a uh, Stalin uh, type model. We should not uh, take uh, any lessons uh, from uh, China. Uh, their experience is detrimental uh, to us. Uh, let me uh, draw your attention to uh, something else. Uh, when we uh, look at the level of monopolism uh, in uh, any given economy, we must realize that uh, monopolies uh, uh, make uh, some good and they make uh, some harm. I have read a lot on this. Uh, some monopolies in some countries uh, may uh, impact the uh, development of uh, small and medium-sized businesses. Uh, monopolies uh, can impact uh, prices. Uh, they can impact uh, the situation uh, with uh, investment, uh, with the development uh, of uh, innovative technologies. In Russia, uh, when we deal with our economy, uh, we uh, see a different picture. Let me give you an example of uh, SMBs. Uh, we have uh, been uh, talking about the need uh, to develop SMBs for so many years. Uh, politically, I've been paying attention uh, that our political leadership uh, uh, is uh, uh, backing uh, large corporations uh, which act as uh, locomotives uh, in the uh, national economy. Uh, the hope is that those uh, big corporations would uh, pull uh, our economy out of any recession and uh, small and medium-sized businesses are left apart. Uh, look at the Asian miracle, uh, Asian economic miracle. Uh, I'm talking about Hong Kong, Singapore and other uh, economies which are developing very powerfully, very strongly. Um, and they are also supporting big corporations as well. Why can't we do that? Yet another point, uh, it also has to do with uh, monopolies. I have uh, checked out some statistics and I uh, came to the following conclusion. Uh, when we uh, look at the uh, assessment of uh, main uh, assets of production companies, uh, the uh, level of uh, depreciation is very high. Uh, even in oil and gas companies, it may be uh, up to 80%, uh, 50 to 80% deterioration, depreciation. Why is this happening? Uh, companies uh, which are strategic, uh, companies uh, which uh, make a great uh, contribution to the national budget. They are not uh, using uh, their revenues uh, for development of their own assets. They are not modernizing uh, their production facilities. That's one of the big problems. So we uh, end up with uh, this uh, picture. On the one hand, uh, they have uh, big profits. On the other hand, uh, they are not using this uh, profit to modernize and develop their uh, production. We have uh, came up with a draft law on uh, property management. Uh, managers uh, uh, often happen to be uh, ineffective. Uh, they cannot uh, be uh, bankrupted. Uh, on the other hand, they are not effective. And uh, those uh, uh, owners, uh, they, well, we should do something about them. Uh, we uh, have to have a law and uh, uh, those companies have to be uh, nationalized or privatized. Uh, some measures must be taken. And the final point that I want to make uh, is this. Uh, at uh, one point in time, we had uh, a government resolution on uh, demonopolization of uh, the economy. I think that uh, document is obsolete. We need a new uh, uh, decree uh, on this matter, and uh, I hope uh, we would see it, and uh, it uh, would uh, reflect uh, today's situation in the economy. Uh, monopolies are not... Uh, really a virtue and they are not evil, but the government should have a clear policy uh, regarding monopolies. Thank you. No, uh, what? Thank you, Vladimir Sergeyevich. Another comrade, Mr. Tinov can comment. 
if you wish, as I have a question, tell us, please. You started from the statement about corruption. Do we think the same way about this topic? The actions of the state officials, public officials, leading to monopolism and corruption, are the twin brothers? I think so. Yes. Thank you. Colleagues, as we agreed, we can have questions to the speakers. Colleagues, who is in charge of microphones? Who is in charge of microphones? Please use microphone. Introduce yourself. Malinko Gennady Ivanovich. Tell us, please, who brought to, into Duma, who adopted a law about self-regulated organizations. At least it was not me. Who? I participated in different business in adoption of the bankruptcy law. There was uh, arbitration managers. There was special article in the statute. I participated there. Maybe Marie Alexandrovna can tell us. But I didn't participate. I would like to know so, that such statutes, if someone has ID colleagues, will not have presentation, the question and answer. So you don't know. What can I see? They destroyed me for 20 years. I managed open corporation and I was general director. I was ruined. By the way, about where to look, who is in charge of particular draft law. This wonderful website about every draft law, there's full history, who introduced it, what was the explanatory report, who spoke, even titles, about the comments and proposals. Uh, so it's uh, research work, but it is worthy. I didn't do this, I'm not responsible. In Kazakhstan, I developed entrepreneur code for the Republic of Kazakhstan. Uh, for the second day, looking for and cannot find the website of the State Duma. All right, thank you very much. At least we discovered many things from this presentation. Vladimir Sergeyevich didn't ruin the environment of the limited liability companies. He didn't change the self-regulating organizations law. Let's switch to the next speaker. We have next, according to the table, Sergei Puzirevsky. His topic of presentation, modern problem of development of anti-monopoly legislation in the Russian Federation. Sergei Anatolyevich, please. Thank you very much. I'm glad to participate in such discussion, in the legal discussion of economic questions, because understanding the sources and the subject of discussion is important to have definitions and terminology the session is called Monopoly, Good or Evil, and Threat to the National Security. In order to answer this question, first of all, we have to understand what is monopolism. Alexander Yulevich, when he said, spoke, he referred to President who came to the 25 years jubilee of the anti-monopoly service. In his presentation, monopolism sounded very negatively because it strangles many spheres of economy. In the future, we heard that can be good from the standpoint that monopolism is not always bad. That's why the first I wanted to start with is to have definition of termin terminology. We say that monopolism, let's say, is the in indication of negative, negative indication of monopoly. And hardly anybody can say it's uh, good, such as abuse of dominating position, or the cartel agreement of which Alexander was telling us, and implications for economics. Hardly can somebody say it's negative. We perceive monopolism as simply a mon monopoly. Can economies get by without monopoly? Everyone in this audience will say it's impossible in a certain way because the natural monopolies without which it's impossible to le get by. And in some way, of course, we need to clearly determine and have definitions when within the time frame we'll be talking about. 
we'll talk about monopolism as negative factor because monopoly acts in certain way on the market that limits and hinders competition and there are some monopolies without which economy cannot avoid first of all monopoly sectors are many unfortunately tendency that we see in the economy in some cases Im have implication that, it, that there's more and more new monopolies and sometimes we discover that certain companies go away from the market and the additional dominating player come up and in a certain way we have to understand that at the end of the day monopolization of certain spheres does not do any good to us the only panacea is to make sure that we have development and this is competition how to achieve this is question not only of our session but all the directions of uh, discussion that should be formulated by economists and be part of the economic policy of the state i can give you many examples of how competition changes industries however i will go back to the constitution that looks at the competition as the foundation of the constitutional arrangement there's guarantee of competition and nothing is said about monopoly and if it talks about monopolism the word monopolization should not be permitted this is the approach formulated by constitution based on this few statements few bullet points related to the elements of development of modern regulation including monopolies and the spheres of anti-monopoly regulation i'll not talk about fourth anti-monopoly package where majority of our audience discussed but few statements related to the regulation of monopoly in the modern conditions just recently we received authority related to the tariff regulation i mean general um, anti-monopoly service this is certain element of the of a challenge when anti-monopoly and monopoly regulation should merge although in historical context this will not be for the first time but they should have synergy for the further economic implications now speaking of how re is related to regulation of natural monopolies of course we consider that these sectors that can live under competition environment they should be free and liberated because monopoly regulation of relationships really having to do with the potential competitive sectors is senseless because any attempt by the state to regulate the spheres will not lead to the effect that the competition can lead to no matter how we try in natural monopolies to cut costs it will not be the same effect related to what competition does because nobody will allow excessive excessive uh, operational costs nobody will allow to have too much cost for delivery of goods there's more sneaky competitor who can overpass you and you can be pushed away from the market wherever is possible the first step of demonopolization should take place i mean demonopolization not in the sense how it happened in early 90s when you have to bring all sectors into the competition sphere demonopolization of natural monopolies that formerly are part of, of the group of natural monopolies but switching to the demonopolized one decision made last year is demonopolization of the tariffs in the sphere of the airport services in the area of three major airports in moscow that was the first step this year we hope very much the other will take place such as the telecommunication and some other places where it's possible the second of course along with reform the natural monopolies in some way gained element through tariff regulation system they have a feed during last uh, practically 10 years allowed 
have allowed serious financial resources to accumulate. When all other industries feel badly, it would be nice to have natural monopoly starting to share the resources with neighboring industries. How much it is possible, we have to think how to lawfully do it. The second topic that directly relates to monopolization is participation of the state in economics. As the experience shows of the anti-monopoly control in this sphere, appearance of the state in many competitive spheres make out of the competitors make them monopolies. If there is new attractive sector in business and uh, state unitary, municipal unitary enterprises come, it uh, possess, takes possession and there is no competition left. Very important element in regulation and prevention of monopolization could be reform of the very institute of the state unitary enterprises that we discussed for two and a half years and there is relevant draft law in state Duma. I hope in the near future, maybe in January or February, new statute will be adopted and the federal unitary enterprises will not be the way they are now. Private business, in some cases, more efficient, could be under competition circumstances and, and environment can create competitive goods and help to develop economy. Another topic mentioned briefly, small businesses and the middle business, medium businesses and the Russian economy. When we talk about monopolization, of course, would be nice to understand how much it is demanded in the Russian economy and how it can in affect and prevent from monopolization. First of all, the volume, the size of small business is questionable. What are the companies that are small businesses today? You cannot even compute, they say 20, 30 percent, maybe even less. This year, a new statute was adopted from the 1st of January that will be accounting system introduced. If the companies of small businesses type, by the end of the year, we'll know the real number, how many small businesses we have in our economy. But the most important, we have to understand how legislation, how other companies can influence and help small businesses. If in all the world, it is believed that small businesses is the cushion that helps economy to be stable and the big volume related to also big number of the employed people in small businesses and it helps to solve many social objectives you have to understand what elements help to develop helps the progress in terms of anti-monopoly regulation one of the proposals that we make there I'll be completing soon. It's immunity introduction. In December of last year, we were able to adopt immunity, anti-monopoly persecution. Small business should not think about anti-monopoly service because market forces of small business, it's not supposed to know anything about anti-monopoly. We hope very much that in January, February, this statute will be adopted. Administrative costs will be less. Another topic that also we started to discuss and we find very serious discussion. We need different opinions, opportunity to procure from large companies by small businesses. The idea that we mentioned and declared quite roughly 10% out of the procurement of the companies in particular and by the private companies from small and medium businesses faced with serious worries they thought it can hinder the entrepreneurial initiative and lead at the end of the day to that it will slow down large companies. So we have to think in such initiative we plan in the near future uh, pose if we get support from the government, if we find elements that economically help to stimulate, we, we may continue. Ending my presentation, I want to say that the topic
of monopolism on the topic of prevention of monopolism is wider than the administrative jurisdiction, administrative intervention, or adoption of laws. The civic society can function, others don't have time, through the system of protection of the suffering entities, those who suffer losses through the judicial system. In the civil society, there must be something that prevents monopolism. Thank you. Sergei Anatolievich. One question, we don't have much time. Is anybody willing to ask question to the speaker? Sergei Anatolievich, considering that you employer of anti-monopoly, for monopolism or anti-monopolism? Depends how you understand monopolism. I'm against monopolistic activity. Am I against monopoly? Less monopolies is better because I work for anti-monopoly service, but they are unavoidable. Please, don't forget to introduce yourself. Kasenka Andrei Genevich. Provocative question to you. Batut question, very loud one, case that is loud. In the context of immunity, the case was enacted, uh, initiated, Andrei Evgenievich, in the historical context, it corresponded to the legislation, but Patut case was solved in 2011. In 2011, we changed the law that prevented from the repetition of such cases. At certain stage, it corresponded to the law, it was confirmed by the courts, but it will never happen again. Colleagues, we will change the sequence of the speakers, because one of the colleagues will be leaving us. Let me introduce you to you and give the floor to Yermakov Viktor, the ombudsman of small and medium businesses. Th thank you very much. Thank you for invitation. I'm surprised why we didn't have discussion earlier, because we talk about the same thing and we solve the same problem. I was listening, I have impression that with my colleagues, I discuss the issue of protection, of SMB protection. I'll remind you that the president initiated the adoption of the law. Boris Titov, the ombudsman of the entrepreneurs, in each sector has associates, I mean SMB, and regional ombudsman. All the system works like this. If an entrepreneur violate his right violated by the law enforcement, he passed through all instances without any re result. If he's our client, he comes to us. If it's small and medium business, but it's Yurevich sends to our apparatus. In one month, we have to find solution and give the answer. It works out for us, usually in favor of the small and medium businesses. I'm not saying that the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service is dominating as the subject of complaints. And this is archi important. And I'll support the statement made by Alexander Yurevich. The national security issue. There's new attempt to launch sector of small and medium businesses. The state corporation was established. A number of decisions was made. And the key point in the strategy and the complaints mostly are the I mean state procurement from the small and medium enterprises. They talk about conspiracies and cartel agreements. I'll tell you that in strategy of the sixteenth year, the key the locomotive that should launch the sector, especially considering the cost of credit resources that are exorbitant. Of course, the access to the state procurement, including by the large natural monopolies, large corporations, and so on. This objective should be solved in the 16th year. This is very complex, but it opens the market of trillion rubles for small and medium enterprises. It should motivate large companies, information of the pool of small enterprises that are competitive, in the interest of consumers, that is also important, on the condition of the input substitution and so on. The most, the most difficult 
the toughest. We need to join forces in order to solve this problem because if this element, I'm not mentioning the other ones, if it's, if it's not realized in the 16th year, we cannot talk about attempt of breakthrough. It will be very difficult. I'm very positive about, and I'm, I was pleased and surprised congratulating anti-monopoly service. It's about the fourth anti-monopoly package. It was fruit of the very tough fight. The Batut example irritates even me. What can you do? This is our history. However, I believe what were you able to do is plus. Few things I'll mention that are very important in the context of the complaints that we had received. First of all, small businesses and individuals with more, less than 400 million annual revenue are taken away from the control of federal anti-monopoly service. Considering the additions which you mentioned in the fifth anti-monopoly, we will finalize it. It's a colossal step forward, even here, not from the standpoint um, of decrease that is important also, the additional load on the small business. But I know the resource of territorial anti-monopoly departments and I know that majority people are good faith people how much opportunity they will have to focus at real monopolists on the regional market so that they can change the environment and form statistics made of real sources it will deprive but faith once there were some people like this. They can create statistics based on the penny-wise cases, and the quality can be changed. The key point that we are very thankful for, we fight for, to change the philosophy of the supervising authorities and switch to the risk-oriented approach. And what you wrote there, the opportunity to warn companies about inspections let them correct and if they are not really good faith we want to you create a very good precedent and thank you very much for this and um, i hope that in this year we will be able to make a shift important element from the standpoint of complaints we provide question of the collegiate body when different cases in different provinces are considered. We also receive instrument f really functioning that will help you to for the ombudsman to in coordination with you in the interest of the players of the market in the interest of the consumers. Talking about quality of service to work more efficiently. Und undoubtedly, we like to criticize, but in this case, unquestionably, it's a serious step forward, knowing from inside this tough fight. It's great. And if we move forward with the success and the application of law, usually it happens. We try the best, but it works out as usual. We'll see from the 5th of January, it started. And based on the statistics of complaints, what comes from the provinces to us, we'll see how law application works. What works and what fails for some reason. We wish very much to have the service of the ombudsman and federal anti-monopoly service. They can exchange views and come to the fifth anti-monopoly package where there is a final, the second half of the idea <clears throat> that along with having uh, to the market's access to the financial sector, the second part to take off all the load, as the wise man said, if you cannot help, don't prevent, give us freedom.
and people will solve it. We'll use all opportunities. We are ready. And once again, thank you for your invitation. And we're ready to collaborate in this way. Thank you, Viktor Petrovich. You are the most disciplined speaker now. So I have a question. A question to the Ombudsman. Viktor Petrovich, please explain how discredited approach relates to the warnings that must be issued by the anti-monopoly service, such as warning about arrival. How about raids at the sun, sunrise? If anti-monopoly service can detect uh, dangerous practices related to the conspiracies. I don't quite understand how risk-oriented approach relates to the information of the following action. You agitated all in me, all our discussions with the law enforcement people who also sp speak un unexpected is the best factor. What is in risk-oriented approach? We here and there see when the officials and the inspectors come and for some penny cases stop small enterprises that become bankrupt in three months. We need additional arguments. You don't have to, of course, in places where you talk about things such as health risk and so on, clear conspiracy, you have to be in unexpected. And this was spoken of today here. But the approach should be like this, that allows to warn not become not make bankrupt it helps people to cor make correct corrective action those who make mistake because of lack of thinking or for some other reasons and only then to switch all other measures that can lead to bankruptcy plus certainly such things when the penalties for small enterprise and gazprom penalties are the same Perhaps such things should be related. And here for us, principal importance is that philosophy is you can, without seeing potential enemy, thought through wrongdoer if he is not discovered. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Yuri Grossman. I'm the postgrad in Ron Hicks. I'm supposed to ask the question, but I have this question right now, and I'm interested in your opinion. You said that it is worth, maybe not to make mandatory, but enable monopolies to procure goods from the small businesses. I'd like to expand this based on example of large retail companies such as supermarkets such as Dixie, Petorichka, Shan, and so forth. We know that were established overseas. And the observation is that in many ways they prefer to buy goods also abroad because it is profitable for them. Colleague, question, please. I'm trying to formulate. It's a broad question. What I wanted to say. You want to ask. Maybe it's worth If you may, maybe not make mandatory, but help to make companies buy produce from the domestic producers. For instance, it's called import substitution. Yes, among other things. I know that in Stavropol. Thank you for your question. Naturally, the, my colleague hints me. The answer is only positive, but the topic is more complex. The question is how to motivate large companies to form such suppliers around themselves, not creation of the oblique schemes. There is management that has rent in all tricky schemes. It's at the public. There is Kamaz. It made industrial park, planted small enterprises that supply, supply it. They are happy. They provide good. There is another management that uh, 
for the state r status rent buys in very oblique manner from uh, our Chinese or Turkish friends. This is the difference. You have to motivate to make competitive economy, not some oblique interests, colleagues. The commentary is later. I'll continue question. Don't continue your question. Thank you. We don't have time. We'll give you some time at the end. Thank you. I'm glad that the presentation is very <coughs> dynamic. At first, it seemed like um, people are not so interested. Maybe they're tired. Allow me to introduce to you the fourth speaker. It's Vipan Viktor Alexeyevich, Deputy Dean and the uh, adjunct professor of legal school department of Moscow State University. He will analyze commodity markets during analysis of economic concentration. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, let me uh, start uh, by saying that uh, uh, monopolies are not a virtue. And it's uh, not because I want uh, to uh, say the same thing as uh, the president uh, says. Uh, I truly believe that uh, justifying uh, monopolies and uh, developing uh, laws uh, accordingly uh, would be uh, very inappropriate, very wrong. But now back uh, to the main uh, subject. Uh, of uh, debates at Gaidar Forum. This attempt uh, to link everything to national security is not uh, really a uh, right thing to do. Uh, I have uh, looked at the uh, uh, role of uh, Federal Anti-Monopoly uh, Service and uh, I uh, want uh, to uh, tell you that uh, the main uh, function of uh, you is to protect competitive environment. Uh, this is the main principle and that has to be the uh, main line of your work. As of the uh, economic uh, concentration uh, that I was planning to talk about, uh, I uh, want uh, to share this thought. Uh, I have a lot of respect uh, for anti-monopoly uh, agency. Uh, they are uh, in the front uh, lines of those uh, fighting uh, for the interests of the business community. Uh, deals with uh, economic concentration are very uh, different. Uh, and. Uh, anti-monopoly uh, service is not always uh, performing its duty the way it uh, should. Uh, I have looked at several cases that uh, went uh, to the Supreme Court. One of them uh, had to do uh, with uh, timber production. Uh, I have the statement, Tyranny Less is the name of the uh, case. And there is another case uh, that has uh, just been filed. Uh, it's about uh, Eurosat uh, acquiring Svesnoi uh, network. Uh, I uh, became interested uh, in these cases, and I have noticed that in coordination of uh, deals on economic concentration, the most important thing is that uh, anti-monopoly service should uh, perform its key function. It should analyze commodity markets uh, in a very profound fashion. There is a decree uh, 220 on analysis of the competition environment in commodity markets. There are base requirements. Uh, there is procedure uh, for the analysis. Uh, there are uh, indicators that have to be looked at. Uh, the boundaries of markets. We uh, select certain markets. We look at the consequences of transactions. We uh, have to ask uh, market participants about the situation. We have to follow this procedure because there is no other regulation on this matter. Uh, why is this important? Economic uh, concentration uh, can be a virtue. It can be good when it uh, enhances competition, strengthens it, uh, when it uh, 
uh, brings about a deterioration of competitive environment, uh, then it's evil. And uh, anti-monopoly uh, uh, service uh, should uh, profoundly study the commodity market. How does it do it? I don't want to go into the details. Uh, if you are interested, you can check it out yourself. They would uh, request uh, that certain documents be provided uh, by the uh, participants uh, in a certain transaction. The Supreme Court said uh, that uh, anti-monopoly service was right. Uh, they have analyzed the market, uh, they have looked at the competitive environment, and they arrived at the conclusion that acquisition of 100% uh, shares of uh, Prim or less uh, would uh, be detrimental uh, to the competition environment. Uh, I uh, am an expert in telecommunications. I am looking uh, at the level of analysis. I uh, see that uh, in telecommunications, uh, uh, federal and monopoly service is not always uh, gets uh, into the details. Uh, when a transaction is clear, uh, when it's about uh, sales of uh, timber assets, uh, it's uh, not really a big uh, problem. However, when the market is more complex, it's a sectoral market and uh, market boundaries are uh, quite vague, they have to be identified clearly. Uh, and then we see really surface analysis. Uh, I would like to uh, draw uh, uh, everyone's attention to this. Uh, regardless of what market uh, we're looking at, we should have uh, one common approach uh, to analyzing it, regardless of how difficult it can be. Uh, we have to use a uniform approach. I have uh, paid attention to one boundary of this commodity market, uh, uh, the uh, service of uh, connecting uh, clients uh, and subscribers uh, to uh, mobile telecommunications. Uh, there's this uh, market of services that I can explain to you in simple terms. Uh, there's a Svesno network, there's Eurosat uh, network, that's another uh, cell phone uh, provider. Uh, and uh, they uh, sell uh, packages of uh, services. Uh, and uh, suddenly uh, we uh, see that uh, federal anti-monopoly service does not see this market, very complex market, and I can't understand this. I uh, remember Mr. Obmutsman saying that next year uh, would be uh, the year of law enforcement. Uh, pay attention to this. The legal system uh, is going through transformation. Uh, we uh, have this one uh, judge who is here uh, in the room, and I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, the system becomes more uh, profound. Uh, it uh, looks at the relations uh, between different uh, market players. In other words, a federal and monopoly service has to go in depth uh, into uh, the uh, relations uh, between uh, different entities. Uh, you uh, have to uh, do uh, in-depth analysis. You have to uh, do a thorough uh, study, uh, law and economics. We are lawyers and we're looking uh, at uh, economic issues. Uh, law enforcement has to be uniform. Uh, when we're uh, looking at uh, cases of uh, economic concentration, in order to save competition, we have to uh, carefully study uh, each economic situation in very complex commodity markets and make a decision uh, on uh, whether uh, competition is limited uh, or not. Uh, the prime focus uh, should be uh, not uh, on formal things, but uh, on uh, encouraging a business and competitive environment. Uh, this is a simple truth. Uh, that's uh, how we should act. Uh, we should uh, not uh, be focused on the fifth anti-monopoly package and how great it is. Uh, we need to see uh, how uh, enforcement uh, is taking place and whether it helps the growth of Russian economy. Then we wouldn't have uh, to speak so much about national security. Thank you. Excellent, excellent, uh, Victor. If I may, I would like to ask one simple question. Uh, Victor, uh, how do you see uh, the uh, difference uh, or the dividing line uh, in uh, 
unique uh, enforcement and uh, uniqueness of each uh, situation that anti-monopoly service uh, is looking into. Many cases are very unique. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, circumstances are uh, completely new, and we often uh, see uh, new markets uh, like uh, uh, Google uh, versus uh, Yandex uh, case. Uh, we. Uh, are uh, bringing in new knowledge and those unique cases they are very important uh, that is our uh, best practices that is our experience that we are uh, accumulating i think all anti-monopoly uh, cases are unique uh, not uh, one of them is uh, like any other uh, each one case is unique i can give you a, a quick answer uh, practice is the criteria uh, of truth. I have looked uh, at uh, various uh, cases. Uh, I have looked at facts. Uh, if investigation has not taken place, I can give you lots of examples, but uh, this is not uh, the time for that. If uh, in one case you do your own in-depth study, uh, which is very appropriate, I think it's uh, very uh, right and in a different case uh, you say that the market is uh, new and it's complex and you don't do your own investigation this is wrong uh, when the ministry of telecommunications had uh, uh, a question about skype they have uh, come to us uh, to the uh, department of law and uh, we uh, have made uh, a, we have done a study where the skype uh, is uh, offering a telecommunication service i have uh, looked into that and we proved uh, that uh, Skype uh, offers a telecommunication service and uh, they should uh, have a license uh, from standpoint of e uh, economics and law. Uh, it's a telecommunications service. So you have to have a uniform approach uh, to all business matters. Understanding that uh, there are um, concrete uh, companies behind that and uh, they can claim uh, we have disappeared as a business. Uh, they have killed our business. Uh, we should uh, look at uh, specific individuals. We have to look at specific legal entities. If that's what we look uh, up to, then uh, we are going to be in good shape. Um, I'm Nikolai Kolomichenko. I have a question about monopolies. Uh, many people said that uh, monopolies are uh, evil. I think that it's uh, all uh, dependent on the scale uh, of monopoly. Monopoly in aircraft building, monopolies uh, in shipbuilding, uh, that's a good thing uh, for those who buy uh, ships and aircraft. At the same time, there are markets of uh, services. Uh, gentlemen, I am going to interrupt you. My question is, what is a monopoly? Is it virtue or is it uh, evil? Uh, Sergei has already answered this question. It can be uh, both. I wanted to uh, give you one uh, simple idea. A strategical monopoly uh, is vice. Uh, if we uh, walk uh, towards uh, monopolization, uh, it would be wrong. Uh, uh, if I have a toothache, I, I uh, have to do something about it. I go to a dentist. Uh, if in your strategy you assume that uh, some monopolies are a virtue, uh, they are good, it's wrong. You can say that uh, currently uh, you want to monopolize a certain market. Uh, this is a wrong uh, foundation to build your strategy upon. Uh, the uh, president uh, made this very clear in his statement. Uh, the next uh, presenter, uh, Alexei uh, Sushkevich, uh, will uh, 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 talk about commodity markets as well. Uh, uh, if I may, I would like to speak from uh, here. I uh, am uh, puzzled uh, by the fact that uh, 26 years uh, into uh, the uh, anti-monopoly regulation, we still uh, cannot uh, provide a clear answer uh, to the question if uh, monopolies are 
uh, virtue or vice. Uh, I am uh, a lawyer, and uh, that's what I will focus. Uh, the answer to this big question has to be uh, uh, searched uh, in the uh, trends uh, that we uh, see uh, in the anti-monopoly service in uh, Eurozac uh, and its commissions. Uh, we uh, see uh, that there is uh, a large number uh, of organizations and uh, agencies uh, uh, that have uh, emerged over the last uh, 12 to uh, 15 years. Uh, they have to do uh, with anti-monopoly uh, regulation, although their functions are often uh, vague uh, and uh, <coughs> remotely related uh, to the uh, core objective. Uh, so I think we uh, have to uh, get uh, more systemic uh, in the legislation uh, that uh, deals with market regulation. Uh, the federal uh, anti-monopoly uh, service is uh, one agency, and that makes the situation much uh, easier. I think this uh, systemic approach uh, uh, is uh, very important. Uh, we are talking about antitrust legislation, but there is more to it. Uh, I think we should look at the uh, goals and the objectives uh, of the uh, antitrust legislation. Uh, one most important uh, goal uh, that uh, is underlying for uh, this uh, set of laws uh, is a protection of competitive environment. Uh, there are uh, certain uh, norms that protect uh, competition, uh, and these laws are unique. They are not like other laws, uh, and uh, that is reflected uh, in the procedures, uh, in the language of these laws. Uh, today, uh, antitrust legislation uh, protects uh, fairness uh, in uh, the economy. Uh, it's not related uh, to uh, protection of the competitive environment. Uh, this is about a public understanding of fairness uh, in different segments of the economy. Uh, there's this uh, old uh, uh, office, Fair Trade uh, Commission, uh, that uh, I uh, keep thinking about uh, its uh, protection of uh, fair trade. Uh, everything that uh, antitrust legislation has, uh, everything that has to do with regulation of uh, trades has really no uh, relation uh, to competition as a state of commodity market. It's protection of uh, a fair uh, trade, its protection of uh, trade participants, uh, providing uh, them uh, equal conditions, uh, equal access uh, to trades, equal uh, access to information. I, uh, I would say that uh, among such uh, legal uh, organizations that protect uh, fairness uh, uh, and uh, they also deal with uh, price uh, regulation, uh, which we find in anti-monopoly uh, legislation, and which has nothing to do uh, with uh, protection of competitive environment. Uh, when we uh, cut back on uh, high monopoly prices, we protect uh, a fair trade, even if we limit competition, uh, because uh, uh, of obvious uh, reasons, uh, because uh, the uh, commodity market barriers uh, become uh, more easily surmountable. Um, we uh, are uh, protecting uh, the uh, fair fairness uh, in the uh, economy. So this uh, is uh, something that uh, we uh, should uh, uh, describe uh, in a more uh, specific uh, way. Uh, we don't want to uh, mix up protection of uh, fair trade and protection of competition. We uh, should not mix uh, everything up. Um, there 
uh, is also a need uh, to uh, protect a public uh, a virtue uh, uh, on the side of individual uh, market uh, players. Uh, each uh, uh, business person uh, should uh, uh, act uh, in uh, good faith. Uh, there should be organizations uh, looking after that. Uh, they should have uh, their own uh, specific procedures uh, for identifying violations. Uh, in uh, this uh, way, it uh, wouldn't be a problem to uh, integrate uh, some uh, clauses on uh, natural monopolies. Uh, we would just uh, view a natural monopolies uh, as uh, a way of uh, supporting uh, the uh, efficiency of commodity markets. If we assume that in some markets competition uh, is an effective way of operation, uh, then uh, we can identify uh, indicators uh, that point uh, to uh, markets where uh, competition uh, does not translate uh, into efficiency. In those markets, we can use uh, regulations applicable to the so-called natural monopolies. We could use either this term or come up with a new one. I think uh, we uh, should uh, make uh, a system of uh, such approaches and goals, uh, and uh, uh, it should not be an endless list of things. Uh, we should uh, care about uh, competition, protect competition, uh, protect fairness uh, in economic relations. Uh, we should uh, regulate the uh, markets where competition uh, does not uh, uh, contribute uh, to uh, efficiency. Uh, there's uh, uh, laws on natural monopolies, and uh, there are policies for uh, regulation of natural monopolies then uh, we would understand uh, the uh, uh, definition of a monopolies uh, which are not an inevitable evil, uh, which uh, are uh, a, a consequence of a government's attempt uh, to protect uh, its interests. There are uh, obviously uh, useful uh, monopolies uh, like a monopoly uh, based on uh, patents. There uh, uh, are uh, those uh, 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 who I don't believe it, uh, but uh, patent-based uh, uh, monopolies uh, are good because they contribute uh, to uh, the uh, public uh, welfare. If we uh, try to uh, uh, make a system of antitrust laws, I think we are going to get answers to all questions. Uh, thank you. I have one question for you, and it's a question that comes not only from me. Uh, so, uh, how do we define fairness? Uh, when we get into this fairness uh, subject, it uh, brings up uh, various uh, interpretations. Uh, in uh, some situations, uh, they would say that uh, the law on uh, protection of uh, competition uh, is a requirement uh, for fairness to be observed. Uh, I'm not clear about that. Uh, well, uh, the situation with uh, fairness is quite dubious. Uh, the law uh, has to protect uh, fairness. It uh, has to protect good faith. Uh, it has uh, to uh, uh, defend uh, and protect virtue. Then uh, we uh, would uh, have uh, to uh, source uh, certain things uh, to the uh, courts. Uh, we have to rely on courts uh, in many ways. We have no answers to many uh, questions because a judge uh, would uh, normally uh, avoid uh, uh, making a, a judgment. Uh, and uh, this is a tradition that has to be changed. Uh, for your reference, uh, Alexei uh, Gennadievich is an author of uh, one statement, not all fairness can be uh, fixed through antitrust legislation. Excellent. 
Uh, I like a more optimistic uh, statement on that. Uh, there is no fairness uh, in the world, but we are building it. Uh, well, uh, we could uh, take uh, a lot of time uh, talking about that, uh, way longer than uh, this uh, panel uh, is uh, given. Uh, judge's decision uh, is uh, an interesting concept, uh, but judge uh, has uh, to uh, substantiate uh, every decision. So let's not uh, get carried away uh, and uh, talk into that. I'm going to now pass the floor to the next presenter, uh, Mrs. Uh, Yegorova. Uh, I uh, want to uh, talk uh, about the responsibilities for violation of antitrust laws. Uh, the main uh, problem of uh, enforcement uh, of laws uh, have to do with the following. Uh, today, uh, there is a very uh, urgent uh, debate on the mechanism of uh, compensation uh, of damage uh, as a result of violation of antitrust uh, laws. Uh, in current laws, uh, we uh, don't have a description of uh, a damage uh, compensation. Uh, this uh, is uh, something yet to be addressed. Uh, currently, there uh, is uh, no uh, link uh, between anti uh, competition behavior uh, in a transaction and uh, recognizing the deal as uh, new. Uh, one uh, important uh, point uh, that I want to cover is uh, adding uh, a, a general rule on uh, annulment of uh, transactions uh, which are in violation of anti uh, trust uh, laws. I think uh, we uh, should uh, develop a new uh, concept of responsibility uh, to make sure uh, that uh, there is necessary uh, compensation or contribution uh, provided uh, to the party that suffered the damage. Uh, we uh, will uh, thus be able uh, to uh, make a good contribution uh, to uh, uh, creation of a uh, good competitive environment. Like I said, we are uh, lacking this uh, mechanism uh, of compensation. Uh, we uh, should add uh, this uh, obligation. The main problem there uh, has to do with uh, lack of a mechanism for calculation of damage uh, resulting uh, from a uh, public offense. Uh, if we are to apply Article 10 of the Civil Code, uh, and if we use the analogy uh, principle, uh, then uh, we have to uh, add a rule on uh, uh, annulment of uh, transactions which are in violation uh, of antitrust legislation. And uh, we should also add a procedure on uh, claiming uh, compensation of damages uh, resulting from such crime. Uh, we uh, also think it's uh, important uh, to uh, add this uh, notion uh, of compensation uh, resulting from violation of antitrust laws. I uh, think it could be uh, an effective uh, tool. Uh, Anti-monopoly uh, compensation would uh, give us uh, good opportunities uh, to identify uh, wrongdoings uh, because um, uh, this uh, would also uh, be uh, good uh, for the uh, law enforcement uh, agencies. I'm supportive uh, of the initiative uh, launched uh, by the uh, Federal Anti-Monopoly uh, Service on this mechanism of compensation. This is a protective measure. Uh, and it's not a penalty at all. Uh, it would be used instead of uh, civil uh, or uh, uh, penal uh, code responsibility. 
uh, there should be a mechanism uh, of a calculation of damage uh, resulting uh, from violations. It can be done in different uh, ways, including <coughs> application of uh, special anti-monopoly procedures. Uh, such anti-monopoly compensation mechanism uh, should uh, help uh, to recover uh, damage uh, where the volume has not been identified. If uh, we are to run analogy with uh, European laws and American laws, uh, the uh, grounds uh, for uh, uh, suing a monopoly uh, is uh, a collective or a an individual uh, claim. Uh, uh, currently, uh, Russian uh, law uh, does not uh, have that. Uh, even when there are uh, good grounds uh, for uh, application uh, of uh, such uh, clauses, uh, even if uh, the uh, procedures uh, that we uh, find in Article 28.2 uh, uh, are observed. As for legal liability, the principle of triple liability, this concept of triple liability is applied quite frequently utilized in the United States according to Clayton Act and it can be realized, can be one of the trends of perfection of the system of liability within Russian anti-monopoly legislation. I believe it is necessary to differentiate in Russian legislation principle of triple liability in relation to individual who violates anti-monopoly legislation. Triple liability includes anti-monopoly penalty as well as the compensation of the illegal revenue and the third indemnification of the legal losses and damages uh, application of the un annulment and restitution. Realization of the principle of triple liability should be based on the joint usage of the Institute of Anti-Monopoly Compensation and Anti-Monopoly Procedures. What is the essence of this principle? It is the award of part of the illegal revenue against the uh, anti-monopoly legislation in favor of the, of the uh, claimant. But, in any case, if the transaction is uh, deemed null, the opposite side of mechanism is transfer of illegal revenue for the favor of the state on the basis of the competition law, the Article 55, as the restitution of the null transaction. It can help to compensate in double amount, so it don't have to collect twice. First, according to Article 55 of the competition law and based on the analogy of the transaction according to the civil code. As for additional civil liability, unfortunately, the repeated violation of anti-monopoly legislation that violate the same the same violation two or more times and for such infringers special regime of additional penalty above the value of the uh, time is limited yes i'm completing and similar legal regimes act not only in administrative law but also can be applied with the usage of the mechanism as part of the uh, civil legislation, most in the transport law. There are other proposals that can impact perfection of anti-monopoly legislation in the sphere of responsibility, including the, if appropriate articles al alternate. The short question, just one. Time is limited. Do I have any question? Yes, please. Submitter, head of anti monopoly. Thank you for your presentation. Very interesting topic. My question is to Maria if you connect to the topic of national security.
one of the threats you mentioned is the threat of economical growth threat. If we impose additional threats in form of compensations, then how this contradiction can be overcome? Also about cartels, there was proposal, I fully agree. Colleagues, please shorter. If a company is subject of the threat of compensation and threat of liability above what, in your opinion, measures are necessary. So the cartel violation, so the rate of discovery doesn't suffer. Thank you for your question. As for the first question, most important is liberalization of anti-monopoly legislation, then we'll solve all the problems. As to the cartel, it is necessary to perfect and apply, enforce legal procedures during perfection of the anti-monopoly legislation, and I think it can positively influence perfection of the cartel situation and use administrative procedure for solving such issues. Of course, with cartels, from the corporate lawyers, I expect such question. You need to perfect in the part of application of legal private procedures. Thank you, colleagues. Next speaker, Andrei Tenishev. The topic of his presentation is perfection of administrative liability for anti-competitive agreements. Thank you. I have applicable question. In perfectly practical, really, we have established maybe the most harsh, the harshest punishment for cartel agreement for legal entities is the number of the penalties if the violation is in the commodity market and penalties as the percentage out of the initial maximum value of trading if it happens during trading. We're saying that anti-competitive agreement can be different, can be cartels, can be agreement with participation of the public bodies, <coughs> can be other agreements, can be illegal coordination of economic activity. It's clear that level of the public's threat, it should be differentiated for different type of anti-competitive agreements. It is just necessary. In the new draft, of administrative code that is taking to the State Duma, the step was made. There are several parts in the article that establishes liability for anti-competitive agreement. In my view, unquestionably, is big plus. However, this acute and strong instrument, sharp instrument, should be perfected and improved. And I think that in the code, when it is adopted more appropriate and more functional formulation should be done for anti-competitive agreement. The first of what I wanted to say now in the case of this agreement is done on the commodity market, liability is computed based on the revenue the infringer received at the commodity market where agreement was concluded. Sounds quite nice, looks quite, sounds quite fair and appropriate. Appropriate. What happens in practice? Anti-monopoly body, as the rule, is not capable to determine the value of the revenue. It should believe the violator, believe the word of the violator. In this case, we base up based on the. Absurd. We presume the good faith of the violator, who honestly can inform the information about the revenue. In my view, it's absolutely not this way. And the practice shows that oftentimes the doubtful data, in the case when the violator clearly fools us, we have certain ways to check it. But coming and doing the audit 
in order to compute the revenue of the violator and conduct full audit with presence of 400 cases in the system. We're not just capable of doing so, and perhaps, in my view, shouldn't be done. But what happens? In this case, we orient at the data that the violator does as the draft administrative code says that the punishment should be fair and it should be certain when we orient at these things, hardly we can talk about fairness and hardly we can talk about certainty of the punishment. At the same time, we conducted selective analysis of the practice of application and enforcement of the reverse penalty based on the amount of revenue on the market. The value of the penalty does not exceed 1.5 percent out of the total amount of the revenue. We fit into this very 3 percent when we talk about monoproduct company. So there is a proposal. The sanction for anti-competitive agreement into the sanction for anti-competitive agreement to keep the reverse penalty, but compute the total revenue that the violator had, had received. We have clear hallmarks. That's the revenue that the preceding year, we can always check this last preceding year value of revenue through the reports and statements he provides to the tax authority. It is clear they can try to fool tax authority. At least we have some clear criteria. Then we can talk about fairness of punishment and about certainty of punishment. The next proposal, we we'll talk about anti-competitive agreement of the operational subject is one of the most dangerous anti-competitive agreement, almost the same as dangerous as the cartels if we talk about public threat in the draft of administrative code agreement with the public bodies includes the part that talks about other anti-competitive agreements and the sanctions are substantially decreased. I would talk about agreement to introduce the same reverse penalty, but the value of penalty should not be less than the cartel uh, penalty from the standpoint of fairness and from the standpoint of public threat it will be appropriate. Further, we have a liability for coordination of economic activity. The value of penalty is fixed. Maximum is 5 million rubles. And the legislator is based on the coordinator does not receive the revenue in the market where the violation had taken place. We coordinate cartel activity and, in essence, would be proper to talk about not coordination but organization of cartel activity in the case when the operational subject organizes cartel then the punishment would be appropriate to establish as the several fold type or the several fold from the penalty of all participants of cartel further vertical agreements in the draft administrative code and organizer of the vertical agreement on other participants of the vertical agreement, there will be reverse penalty for the organizer. They agreed that the penalty should be reversed, but for other participants of the vertical agreements, penalty can be introduced in rubles and go away from the reverse penalty. Another question, we have uh, easement items for the operational subject. If it's not organized of anti-competitive agreement, the operational subject and grave circumstance is the operational subject is the organizer of the anti-competitive action. The lay participants are not present. With these uh, grave circumstances, something should be done considering that time is limited, just one painful subject 
prevention penalties, 10,000 troubles, what happens? We come with unexpected inspection, everything is erased, everything is disconnected. As a result, we don't find anything, and we are deprived with the opportunity to prove the cartel agreement. And many countries introduced reverse penalty for obstruction of inspection. European Union, even Moldavia, introduced such inspection in a number of jurisdictions. Like in Mexico, they established criminal liability. In Japan, even more so, they established criminal liability for refusal to cooperate with anti-monopoly body. Of course, I'm not talking about criminal liability, but as for reverse penalty can be quite efficient measure. That's all for me. Andrei Petrovich, just one question, please. Parashek Sergei from Moscow State University. There is a concept in the Article 16, coordinated active actions. We have concept of coordinated action of the operational subject. What is coordinated action? Will we perfect this institute or this term should be erased from the Article 16? Short question. To remove from the Article 16. Thank you. Briefly one question. Just one from you. Which of you will be asking? Introduce yourself. Sorry, they are not using microphone. I heard my attitude is negative, absolutely, because if the statute is enacted, it will not be functional. It's a long topic. We discussed it for the last 10 years. Criminal liability for legal entities, we know it too well in the Institute because we participated in development. Let's not discuss it here. Believe me, 10 panel discussions will be not enough. The community divided 50-50. There is no absolute black and white. Thank you, Andrei Petrovich. The last speaker out of the key presentations, Numerova Anna Albertovna, about anti-monopoly procedures, the step towards transformation of FAS into the judicial, making a judicial body. Colleagues, good afternoon. Topic of my presentation is quite provocative, because if we reformulate it, we can ask questions differently. Can FAS become arbiter? Because all the all the duties it cannot pose as the arbiter. The only type of violation where anti-monopoly can come close to arbiter is the Article 14 when they consider cases of bad faith competition. This is not only 14, it's 14.1, 14 slash 6, dash 6. Anti-monopoly service is guarding state and public interests during all years of work of anti-monopoly service and application of anti-monopoly legislation, despite of the packages. As far as I know, less questions from the practicing lawyers had about procedure, because anti-monopoly service used very high standard at first in the procedures, borrowing key institutes and clauses from the arbitration process code. And the anti-monopoly service didn't stop there. And the proposal of the partnership, the ninth chapter that provides procedure of hearing the case, it was perfected and new clauses were added where I'd like to stop shortly in the context what clauses were borrowed from the arbitration process code. The norm related to the disclosure of the proof and the duty to disclose by the an entity in early 2000 being the lawyer who protected interests of the company in the courts. The lawyers violated and abused the position 
before the entrance to the courtroom or in the process these parties threw pa pa paper at each other in the last minute to learn about position and the evidence was not shown to the other party. In the middle of 2000 it was prevented quite harshly and the parties were obligated to provide all the evidence and documents ahead of time with enough time to learn. It was reflected in the new chapter, chapter 9 on the competition protection sta statute. When the case is considered is similar to the resolution of the court, what is the basis for suing, what are the signs of violation. Separate, I'd like to stop at the structure of decisions of the FAS. In essence, FAS copied Article 170 from the code and assumed responsibility to formulate decisions, its decisions strictly by structure, introductory part, descriptive, motivating, and resolution part. A couple of years ago, when we analyzed the activity of anti-monopoly body and paid attention to the decision made by the anti-monopoly service, we exactly described that very interesting solution. You read it as, as the detective story, who went there and what evidence was retrieved but motivation was lacking. That would explain why um, anti-monopoly body came to such conclusion and such decision. We impatiently wait for the first decisions, and I think that these decisions will be pleasant for reading for the lawyers, not for the readers of detectives. And the last clause I'd like to refer is the opportunity to deny members of commission if there's conflict of interests, deny of the interpreters and the experts if there's personal interest. In my practice, I didn't face with uh, having necessity with the denial. And this norm ap approximates, I think, to the high standards that was said by the arbitration court, and that the quality will be reflected at the practice of law enforcement. My presentation is over. I'm ready to answer the questions. Thank you. And uh, one short question. Vitaly Dyanov. Anna, tell us, please, what do you believe? Is it possible in the procedure when the body is the investigator and researcher and then assesses the evidence in the process to become the, the, the very arbiter and pose as the arbiter of which you speak. Is there alternative, very complex procedure, but division of functions of those who look for evidence, who assess evidence, and those who make decisions as independent coll collegiate body? on the court, I uh, made reservation. FAS cannot pose as the arbiter because it's always on the gut. It's always the uh, alligator, alleger, as for division of the in entities that do inspection and audit and decide after the fact, we can think, because in essence, administrative code and uh, administrative process can be enacted. The commission has one composition, and the one who makes who rules out, once again, the partnership ground is opened, and I think that we can discuss. Dianov obviously meant to divide multi monopoly service, like in criminal process. There are operatives. The prosecutors, judges, sorry, gentleman is not using microphone. I think our experience is the most progressive. 
Thank you. Thank you, Anna Albertovna. Colleagues, allow me. We're coming to the end, the last presentation. Knyazeva Irina, Doctor of Economical Science, Professor, Head of the Competitive Policy and Economics of Siberian Management Institute, the affiliate of ANHIX. Five minutes, please. Thank you very much, colleagues. First aspect I wanted to stop at within the fourth anti monopoly package framework, one of the most powerful institutional decisions were made is the cancellation of the registry for those who have less than 35 percent. We should say that the registry existed practically, not practically, for 25 years. During its history, it had false and huge re results for the national economy when they didn't allow the fall of the prices. But in certain period of time, it became the slow down mechanism against the processes that were necessary for the most rational and efficient and most importantly required at the present time mechanism of market assessment. That is why departure removal from the registry as the instrument of regulation instrument in some way one of the market assessment instruments will substantially affect the activity that will be done by the anti-monopoly entity while the research market it will be related to three major processes first of which we must talk and uh, everyone agrees is that every concrete case that will be related to relevant market should be subject to analysis according to regulation to 220 assessment of competitive environment addressing the registry that several years ago operational subject was included is not feasible and is not provided. That's first. And second, the power of anti-monopoly service employees for deep and substantial study, of course, will not be enough, will be sincere and analysis. And today we spoke about analysis of the market. Analysis of many markets takes place with violation of not only order and sequence, but the logics, economical logics. And the third, that in my view, the most serious aspect is that during last three to five years, especially last three years, this procedure of appealing, of appeal, if it's not about natural monopolies, first of all, it provides appeal regarding the boundaries of the market, role of expert and economic community role seriously growing. I will not touch the subject. Why does it happen? Why the violation take place? There are serious basic conceptual violation on the part of the anti-monopoly service while market assessment is the matter of the third or second order. I want to say about specifics I saw or something I paid attention to, I noticed. First, and the most important, the position of the merchandise in the mind. It's not having to do with the researchers and employees of anti-monopoly service. In the same manner perceived if the merchandise is material object or if it's service and if it's work that is big mistake it forms in wrong positioning while proving most importantly it starts from absolutely wrong feeling and understanding of the market per se quite often buyer and sellers change places or not rarely the market happens where there's no market and it starts appearing as economical substance, quite often there is a situation when one market is plucked out and decision is made 
that is not related. These are conglomerate markets of services and works. Those were, in the last times, on these markets, the most, the largest number of the problem zones. There are expert analysis. There are violations in these markets, in these very markets of conglomerate works, of conglomerate markets, of course, need deeper and serious study, analysis, and theoretical understanding. What do I see? What, why do we need it? First, what I see in the Regulation 220, which I mentioned with Alexei, I think the Regulation 220 should be entered, should have theoretical concept what's different between service markets of works and services and the market of material product markets because overlapping the same copy paper structurally different characteristics of the market is it's not quite appropriate secondly uh, we uh, need to do a thorough job of uh, training anti-monopoly service uh, workers, not just those who analyze markets. I'm talking about uh, all uh, the uh, officers. Uh, they need to understand uh, the nature of markets and uh, market mechanisms. Uh, I'm coming to an end uh, of my comments. I uh, came here all the way from Siberia. I'm the only one. Allow me to say a few more words as an extra bonus. So the last point uh, is uh, whether it uh, may be uh, reasonable, uh, whether it makes sense uh, to uh, use uh, current uh, institutions um, in the uh, environment uh, that uh, is changing, uh, whether we should uh, continue to use uh, Regulation 220. I think uh, it's uh, not appropriate. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, international experts have been noticing uh, with uh, the uh, changing markets. Uh, macroeconomic uh, indicators uh, should also uh, be adjusted. Uh, I think we have to develop a special approach to analyze innovative markets. So we're done with the presentations. And uh, now, uh, a few uh, comments. Uh, I will uh, give a couple of minutes to Vitaly Dianov, uh, Andrei, uh, or uh, Alexei. Uh, do you want to uh, say anything else? Uh, we don't have uh, any more time for questions. Uh, now that we uh, don't have the time, I'm not going to give you the story uh, that I was uh, planning to share with you. Uh, this may be uh, something we can discuss next time. I was surprised that uh, nobody uh, said anything about the merger of uh, Swiss tea. Uh, this is uh, um, really an eye-opener, and uh, it uh, raises the question whether uh, Federal Anti-Monopoly uh, Service uh, is uh, acting after evaluation uh, has been committed, or its function is prevention. Uh, Jacques Tirol, uh, Jacques Lafont, and other prominent uh, economists uh, say that uh, anti-monopoly uh, service is very different uh, by definition uh, from uh, law enforcement uh, agencies. Uh, we. Uh, see uh, what uh, the difference in approaches is. Uh, federal anti-monopoly uh, service is uh, more and more acting uh, as uh, an entity that tries to prevent things from happening uh, rather uh, than uh, uh, studying uh, the uh, consequences of uh, what has uh, happened, responding uh, to violations. Uh, what uh, kind of consequences uh, will follow this? 
uh, what will be in effect uh, on the uh, competitive environment. This is something that I would like to uh, offer as a subject for our next uh, panels. Today uh, we had a, a very uh, interesting, very curious uh, discussion. Alexei uh, has made a few comments uh, uh, 26 uh, years after uh, the creation of anti-monopoly service. We are talking about this nonsense. Uh, it's not nonsense. Uh, it's uh, very uh, interesting stuff. Uh, 2016, like 2015, uh, will be the uh, year of anniversaries. Last year, uh, we had 25 uh, uh, years of the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service. Uh, uh, this year, we are uh, going to uh, celebrate another uh, anniversary uh, on the uh, antitrust regulation law. Uh, we uh, think uh, it's an important uh, milestone. Irina Knyazeva uh, is uh, now uh, in the seat that uh, uh, Viktor Yermakov um, has uh, been uh, in, and he was responsible uh, for uh, creation of uh, territorial uh, offices. Uh, he's uh, interviewed uh, every uh, head of uh, territorial uh, organization. I would like to remind you of yet another uh, anniversary, uh, which I think uh, is directly related uh, to the subject of uh, this session. Uh, that is a uh, 100th anniversary uh, of the uh, Lenin's uh, book uh, on uh, imperialism uh, being uh, the uh, uh, highest uh, phase of capitalism. Uh, the uh, subjects addressed in that book are still relevant. Uh, Lenin uh, reviewed uh, cartels uh, and they are uh, still uh, around. Uh, we had uh, long arguments uh, with the Ministry of Economic Development. They've been trying to tell us that uh, there are no cartels in the Russian uh, economy. Uh, that uh, all Russian businesses are uh, showing high level of integrity and they uh, never indulge uh, in uh, any criminal activities. Uh, we know otherwise, though, the uh, entry barriers uh, that uh, Lenin wrote about a hundred years ago, uh, the scale of uh, production. Uh, which uh, other companies uh, can uh, not uh, compare to. Uh, all these things have become uh, only stronger. Uh, many things that uh, big corporations can do are uh, completely out of reach uh, for smaller businesses. Uh, uh, the classics of uh, Marxism and uh, Leninism have uh, used uh, the notion of uh, oligarchy, uh, financial uh, capital uh, merges uh, with the uh, government uh, organizations, uh, uh, business uh, people uh, should uh, be aware of that. Uh, we uh, see uh, what has been going on. Uh, I uh, uh, could uh, make a uh, Two more points. Uh, he's been writing uh, those books in uh, Switzerland. Uh, I wanted to uh, make uh, two points. One, uh, there's uh, uh, added uh, value uh, chains uh, notion, a very popular one indeed. Uh, at uh, different venues, uh, people say that this is a great thing and it helps uh, businesses. I think uh, this is uh, quite a, a complex thing when uh, something is added uh, to a value chain. Uh, it makes a business uh, dependent 
uh, on external uh, decision making. Such companies uh, can be manipulated uh, by uh, stronger businesses. Uh, yet another interesting theme. Uh, this is the uh, fourth attribute of imperialism, uh, as described uh, in Lenin's book, division uh, of the world between unions of capitalists. There are international cartels. We know uh, that they exist. We can prove that, and uh, we can identify them uh, and examine them. International cartel is a big uh, taboo uh, in international economic uh, literature. One can find uh, very few works uh, that uh, provide analysis of such cartels and how painful and detrimental they are to the economy. Uh, when we are looking at uh, international cartels uh, markets, we have to uh, bear in mind that uh, today there are new ways uh, that transnational corporations are using uh, to conquer the world. Uh, the uh, era of uh, colonialism uh, is uh, in the past and it's not going to come back. Uh, now we have a much more sophisticated uh, period uh, of uh, private uh, ownership uh, of uh, large uh, territories and big groups of people. Uh, a good example of that is uh, Ost-Indian uh, Company. Uh, you also uh, may know uh, that uh, Belgian Congo uh, was not uh, the uh, royal property. This was private property. Uh, if you look at uh, what is uh, going on uh, uh, with uh, Chinese assets in Africa. Uh, you can see that this is a state uh, monopolistic uh, capitalism at its best. Uh, you may remember Pacific Andos uh, and the role that this company played uh, in uh, Russian uh, fishing uh, industry. This is a very interesting uh, theme indeed, and uh, it uh, keeps uh, going on. Maybe we uh, should uh, uh, write a similar book, uh, uh, what has happened and what is happening a hundred years later uh, after uh, the publication of the uh, first book. A couple of words in conclusion. Thank you very much, uh, Andre. I will follow up on what you said. Indeed, we are uh, celebrating uh, an anniversary of the first antitrust law, uh, which describes the function of the anti-monopoly uh, uh, agency. Protection of uh, competition uh, was uh, complemented by other things, uh, and uh, all those things are now the uh, in the scope of work for uh, federal anti-monopoly uh, service. Uh, several uh, areas: uh, government, public procurement. Uh, tender procedures, uh, military procurement, uh, tariffs, uh, things that uh, we are uh, struggling uh, for, uh, debating uh, in the parliament. All these things are near. They are all intertwined. And uh, all this has to do with the protection of competitive environment. Uh, the uh, more things we take into account, the stronger we get, and the better uh, toolkit we will have uh, to protect the national economy. Thank you very much to everyone. I think the subject of monopolism uh, being a threat to the national economy um, has been uh, covered uh, quite comprehensively. Uh, once again, thank you uh, to uh, Renepa. Thank you for uh, offering us this uh, subject uh, for discussions. Um, I uh, am uh, going to uh, pass the floor to the uh, host, uh, to uh, Mrs. Yegorova. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, this was a very interesting discussion. Indeed, we have raised very relevant points uh, 
interesting questions have been posted, and I hope that this uh, becomes a good uh, tradition to discuss those uh, things uh, related to antitrust legislation at GAIDAR Forum. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again uh, next year. Uh, thank you for participation. Uh, within this uh, session, uh, we uh, want uh, to uh, have uh, the meeting of a commission of uh, anti-monopoly uh, lawyers. In that commission, uh, we had uh, representatives of Federal Anti-Monopoly Service, Mr. Kinyov, uh, Mr. Temeshev, Alexei uh, Sushkevich, uh, Sergei Puzerevsky, representatives of the uh, uh, university uh, uh, school uh, and uh, a number of lawyers. Now I would like to give uh, the uh, floor uh, to Deputy uh, Dean of the Law Department uh, of MSU, Mr. Whiteman. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you briefly about what we do. Association of uh, Russian Lawyers is the most influential uh, legal public organization in Russia. We are saying this because uh, in uh, the uh, uh, organization we have Mr. Blazhev, uh, Krishnenikova, and Mr. Stepanshin. There's uh, no uh, one uh, big federal law that is passed uh, unless it's uh, coordinated uh, with the uh, Association of Lawyers. In Moscow, uh, we have uh, an office of our association. This is the biggest regional uh, office in Russia. Moscow office uh, is active at uh, different venues. Uh, we uh, make presentations at different conferences, and we also uh, participate in work of different commissions. Uh, one of them has to do with anti-monopoly regulation. Uh, Maria Yegorova uh, is the chair of that commission, and we are hoping that in uh, antitrust regulations this uh, commission uh, will uh, become uh, the most influential uh, organization. Uh, we want uh, to have a say. We want uh, to uh, voice our opinions uh, of uh, practicing practitioner uh, lawyers. Uh, I uh, want uh, to briefly uh, talk about uh, some uh, proposals that we have received. I о работе над предложениями по совершенствованию законодательства. И надеюсь, что только лишь ограниченность во времени не позволила в столь сжатые сроки предоставить нам в секретариат комиссии свои предложения членами Ассоциации корпоративных юристов, которые сегодня присутствуют, и представителями экономического направления, которые занимаются проблематиками антимонопольного регулирования. Рассчитываю, что с их участием в будущем мы сможем существенно расширить диапазон наших предложений. Во-вторых, я должна констатировать, что несмотря на то, что совсем недавно был принят очередной антимонопольный пакет изменений в закон о защите конкуренции, четвертый, вот сегодня шла речь уже о том, что пора пятый принимать, как показала наша совместная работа членов комиссии за всего месяц ее существования, антимонопольное законодательство в настоящее время нуждается в систематизации и совершенствовании. И надо сказать, что при подготовке этого заседания наш скандидат получил более 40 предложений по совершенствованию антимонопольного законодательства от 10 членов комиссии, а в том числе и от представителей Федеральной антимонопольной службы, вот Александра Юрьевича Кенева, от Андрея Петровича Теньшева. И от юридического сообщества а также мы получили от ученых, видных отеч... российских ученых в области предпринимательского права членов комиссии, от профессора Белых, профессора Папандопола. А нами... Все эти предложения были систематизированы с учетом их проблематики и специфики, содержащихся в них изменений. Все материалы были разосланы членам комиссии для ознакомления и для дискуссии и для возможности в дальнейшем составить свое мнение и отразить те проблемы, которые 
могут возникнуть по конкретным предложениям членов комиссии. Сейчас коротко, буквально это займет, я надеюсь, не больше 7 минут. Я хотела бы представить основную проблематику, которая была выявлена в результате систематизации представленных предложений. Все представленные предложения можно систематизировать по четырем основным направлениям. Во-первых, это совершенствование понятийного аппарата законодательства о защите конкуренции. Практически каждый из авторов обращает внимание на совершенствование именно понятийного аппарата закона о конкуренции. Каждый из авторов предложений. К сожалению, тенденция к выработке основных понятий закона о конкуренции сохраняется, увы, от одной редакции до другой. И это, несомненно, связано с желанием более детального определения объема каждого понятия. Не знаю, хорошо ли это или плохо, но постоянные изменения в закон о защите конкуренции закон претерпевает. Насколько это хорошо, не совсем думаю, что это правильно. Но, как показывает практика, такая детализация может э, лишь обузить содержание понятия. Например, э, э, была э, э, такая ситуация с определением вертикального соглашения, в котором из, э, из одного антимонопольного пакета в другой изменялось содержание их дефиниции. Наконец, э, в последней редакции закона о конкуренции мы отказались от конкретизации этого понятия. И э, правоприменительная практика показала, что ограничивать общее понятие применения к нему специальных правовых режимов нельзя. И э, нам необходимо придерживаться этого принципа, то есть понятийный аппарат закона о конкуренции э, должен быть универсален и необходимо, э, необходимые исключения должны устанавливаться в специальных нормах или самостоятельных законах, связанных с применением специфики использования антимонопольного законодательства в конкретных сферах э, правоприменительной практики. Второй блок, связанный с теми предложениями, которые были проанализированы. Имеющиеся Сейчас реалии в организации органов государственной власти не могут не оказать существенное влияние на структуру закона о конкуренции. В первую очередь это связано с передачей ФАС, функций и компетенции Федеральной службы по тарифам. Как раз сегодня коллеги упомянули, почему же об этом не говорили. Наши коллеги, сотрудники антимонопольного органа, сами знают лучше, чем, наверное, другие наши коллеги, все проблемы реорганизации этой ветви исполнительной власти. Совершенно очевидно, что такая реорганизация не может не отразиться на содержании антимонопольного законодательства. Не только в части необходимости ее дополнения специальными компетенциями, компетенциями Федеральной антимонопольной службы, но и в части изменения правового регулирования деятельности естественных монополий, которые в новых условиях становятся непосредственным объектом регулирования антимонопольного органа, что вынуждает, безусловно, кардинально пересмотреть все законодательство о естественных монополиях. Третий блок. Совершенно очевидно, что существует масса недостатков в антимонопольном регулировании отдельных групп отношений. Создание наиболее оптимальных правовых режимов в отношении конкретных видов нарушения антимонопольного законодательства побуждает к перманентному совершенствованию законодательства. Ну, с одной стороны, основой для модернизации правоприменительной практики являются те недостатки законодательства, которые сейчас фактически обнажаются у нас. С другой стороны, необходимо отметить активное участие юридической и экономической науки в процессах, в процессах совершенствования антимонопольного законодательства. Именно поэтому мы состав комиссии пригласили признак специалистов, экономистов в области антимонопольного регулирования. Достаточно сказать, что более чем 40 полученных нами предложений, из них более 8 были сделаны именно представителями, в том числе и Федеральной антимонопольной службы. Остальные предложения были получены от тех практикующих юристов, которые занимаются проблемой антимонопольного законодательства. Наконец, совершенно естественно, что вот эти названные мною изменения в структуре государственных органов не могли не отразиться на содержании процессуальной части закона о конкуренции. Кроме того, правоприменительная практика указывает на возможные пути дебюрократизации антимонопольного процесса. И одним из таких путей может быть, например, введение антимонопольных процедур, о которых и в своей докторской диссертации, и также в тех предложениях, которые были представлены, говорит Александр Юрьевич Кинев. Что касается 
тех изменений, которые могут быть в законе о конкуренции. Во-первых, понятие отношения, связанные с защитой конкуренции, как основной объект антимонопольного регулирования. А здесь основная проблема заключается в том, что защита конкуренции, как публичного явления, не может рассматриваться в отрыве от защиты частных и, прежде всего, имущественных интересов хозяйствующих субъектов. Нуждается в корректировке содержания понятия естественной монополии. Сегодня этот вопрос уже поднимался у участников дискуссии. Действующая редакция закона о конкуренции не дает определения понятию естественной монополии. И виды монополии не разграничены. И при этом каждый вид монополии нуждается в специальном регулировании. Необходима адаптация понятия добропорядочность, разумность и справедливость к целям применения антимонопольного законодательства. Так как содержание в гражданском правом смысле оно изменилось, их содержание в связи с изменениями самого гражданского кодекса и известными позициями высших судов в этом вопросе. Понятие координации экономической деятельности также нуждается в корректировке в связи с необходимостью широкого толкования этой категории. И, исходя из этого, отдельные виды координации экономической деятельности, они априори не могут представлять собой антиконкурентные действия. Нуждаются также в корректировке количественные характеристики понятия согласованные действия хозяйствующих субъектов, поскольку закон о конкуренции, в законе о конкуренции необходимо включение указания на дифференцированное применение количественных критериев согласованных действий в случаях коллективного доминирования. Правоприменительная практика также демонстрирует необходимость раскрытия в понятийном аппарате закона о конкуренции понятия «публичное заявление». И такое использование этой категории становится затруднительным без точного указания на ее содержание и формы. Не отличаются также точностью содержания понятия объект экономической концентрации и объект государственного контроля за экономической концентрацией. Который, и здесь возникает определенная коллизия, которая приводит к неопределенности и также нуждается в корректировке. Членами комиссии выработаны предложения. И я думаю, что к следующему заседанию, которое мы планируем провести в июне, мы уже сформируем те предложения более конкретно, на основании тех уже, которые представлены членами комиссии, разместим их на сайте Московского отделения, на сайте Академии народного хозяйства и госслужбы. И я думаю, что работа комиссии будет конструктивной, продуктивной и действительно может принести реальную пользу в целях совершенствования антимонопольного законодательства. Спасибо. Спасибо за дискуссию, спасибо за участие, спасибо за то, что пришли в нашу академию. Всего спасибо. доброго.